Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Uh, as we take the pledge, it is a moment to acknowledge that through the creation and history of this country, freedom and justice have not been reality for many people. And so acknowledging and honoring our full history is essential to creating a more just society. Uh, thank you, and with that, we can take the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epps. Mr. Swigart will do the roll call. Mr. Burdell Williams. Present. Mr. Cohen. Present. Mr. Epps. Present. Mr. Fishbein. Present. Ms. Haywood. Present. Ms. Henry. Present. Ms. Lohman. Present. Ms. Mulhern. Present. Mr. Schultz. All right, next we will um, have our recognition of retirees. And before we start that, I would just like to thank each and every one of you for all the years, um, the time that you put in um, working with all of our students throughout the district. I was sitting at a table with one of the teachers who taught actually two of my daughters. She only remembered one. That's because the other one graduated so long ago before her. Um, Julie usually counts up all the years of service. <laughs> um, but as we look, we we have hundreds of years of uh, service from all of you. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate um, all the work that you've done for the district. Uh, I will say, and I said this to some of the folks, my sister retired some years ago and she tells me that she's busier now than she ever was. She didn't know how she ever worked. <laughs> However, the difference is that the busy that she still she is, is with things that she wants to do. It's with things that are fulfilling to her. So um, congratulations and thank all of you. And we will start, who's gonna start with the... Uh... We're, we're gonna start with our elementaries. So I will call uh, Mr. Lytle uh, to the podium. Myers Elementary School. Could, could we have her stand, please? please. We're going to hold until the end. Now, we can definitely applaud as we go through, but we do have gifts uh, of appreciation in the back. 
and I want to afford principals the opportunity uh, to personally give that uh, to our retirees who are, who are here this evening. And I'll ask Mr. Kaufman to capture and memorialize that through a photo. So uh, please bear with us. Next, uh, we would have Wincote uh, Elementary. Uh, Mr. Teller, Principal Teller. Mr. Buckingham. We're going in alphabetical order. You taught first grade. B comes before G. Forgetting. Problem solver, book lover, union representative, gatherer of science materials, treasure colleague, and valued friend. These are just a few words that the Wincote staff used to describe our friend Steve Buckingham, who has come to the completion of this part of his professional journey. Mr. Buckingham started in the Cheltenham School District as a student teacher at Cheltenham Elementary and then made his way to Wincote, his professional home for 27 years. Steve has fostered a love of reading in generations of first and second graders. Students earn books in his class for reaching various milestones and the coveted prize of the Husky Patch that students would attach to their school bags. And you can still see our fourth graders walking around with great pride with their Husky patch on their school bag. Even during the COVID wilderness, I spotted Mr. Buckingham on the streets of Wincote and Elkins Park, dropping off books at students' homes. He's taken problem-solving teams to national and international competitions, and he's even been kind enough to support novice administrators by offering the gift of perspective on tricky situations. As Steve journeys into the great adventures of retirement that await, I think of the Judea concept of Tinkun Olam, repairing the world. Through his passion for gardening and reading and relationships of all kinds, we know, Steve, that you will continue to offer your gifts to heal our world. And please, as I said earlier today, keep your phone on vibrate. You never know when you will get a call that we need the staples replaced in the copier or the laminating film changed or mulberry leaves for science unit on insects. Thank you for the million ways you have made our Wincote world a better place. Congratulations. This is good. One of the enduring images that has become an icon of sorts for me in thinking about Karen Good happened long, long before we met. I was teaching at Myers and Karen was teaching at Cheltenham Elementary. And every morning as I drove to school, I would notice this woman on a bike pedaling along with saddlebags on both sides of the bike. And I would watch every morning as she turned left off of New Second Street onto Ashbourne Road and begin the long ascent up that endless hill on up to Cheltenham Elementary. I never saw her dismount the bike. She persisted. I would then bump into her at the old Gold's Gym on Church Road, and we eventually became colleague and friends at Wincote. Persistence, tenacity, grit, strength, and determination all capture the long career of Karen Good in the special education classrooms of Cheltenham and Wincote Elementary. She embodies the very life lessons that she's trying to convey to her students who might struggle with reading and math or both. She teaches them that with persistence, tenacity, grit, and determination, that they can climb hills without ever getting off of their bikes. 
In the midst of the persistence, Mrs. Good has used her passion for research on how the brain works to create a classroom environment where movement breaks and mindfulness moments are a natural part of the lesson. So as you prepare for your retirement, I hope that you will find many outlets for your varied interests, including supporting parents, guardians, and caregivers with children who experience learning differently. Enjoy your own family, especially Amelia and Benny, who have grown up right before our eyes. And while your bike riding days might be over, if you ever find yourself power walking by Wincote, please stop in. The door is always open. Congratulations. <laughs> Kathy Rue is not here tonight. Should I go ahead? All right. I know she's listening. <laughs> For almost four decades, let me say that again. For almost four decades, Mrs. Rue has been the face and voice of Wincote Elementary School. After completing years of service as a kindergarten aide at Cheltenham Elementary, Mrs. Rue became the principal secretary at Wincote, serving under the leadership of Dr. Jackson and Dr. Clark. And I guess she thought she didn't have it in her to train one more principal and she got out in the nick of time. Kathy was always our go-to person for everything except for technology. She knew where we could get additional supplies. She'd conspire with us not to tell Dr. Clark when we were running a few minutes late. She is the living history of Wincote and can tell stories of days gone by, parents, students, and teachers, and my hunch is that she has stories on every one of us in this room. One of our favorite memories of Kathy was the gift of hospitality that she always offered. We knew we hit the jackpot when Kathy made the French toast casserole for special occasions. Many mornings, Kathy would get on the intercom and say, we're ordering from Rockies today, the soups are chicken noodle and split pea. This was the open spirit that Kathy offered on every phone call and greeting to every person at the door. She knows the importance of hospitality. As you continue to enjoy your retirement, Kathy, we realize that we are not as well fed at Winco, but we do try to hear to your example to practice hospitality. For by doing so, you might be entertaining angels unaware. Thank you, Kathy, for being an angel in our midst. Cheryl Perry was a valuable member of the kindergarten team of Mrs. Cefeli, Mrs. Ward, and Mr. Taylor. You worked with Mrs. Cefeli for over a decade and were a vital component to the, the success of our youngest learners. You would work with letters and sounds, you would help with number recognition, and you would bandage wounded knees and hurt feelings, both adults and children. You opened milk cartons and thermoses, zipped up coats and searched for lost mittens. You laughed and loved each child as if they were your own. You also had a twinkle in your eye. And when, I twink when your eye twinkled, I knew there was something afoot. Whether you and I were forced to dress up as crayons or the characters from The Wizard of Oz or a minion, you were in it with us. Remember the day we would just chuckle on Mrs. Wishy-Washy Day when every year I refused to dress up as the farm until one year you convinced me that it was just easier to do it than fight Mrs. Cefella. Now you're creating such new memories with your beloved grandchildren 
traveling with Jimmy, and spending more time at the shore. Thank you for all you did for children of all ages. You've left the lasting impression. Congratulations on your retirement. Mary Ellen Avila knows every book in the collection at Wincote Elementary School. She retired from the position of library assistant, but also served in numerous capacities as a special education para, who also picked up a lunchroom assignment and a recess duty as needed. The hallmark of your work was the relationships that you cultivated with each child, particularly in the library. You engaged students in conversation about their interests so that you could help them find that just right book. You were a whiz at checking books in as quickly as you could so that the book could go right back out and into a child's hand. You also supported, at that time, our class program at Wincote. Many mornings I would pull into the parking lot just on the stroke of seven or a few minutes earlier and Mary Ellen would already be there, welcoming families in a hurry to catch the train or get to work and gently inviting sleepy-eyed children into the warm environment of Wincote. She always came prepared with some kind of craft. Every time I saw her, she had out the paint, the crayons, the glue, the glitter, the pom-poms, and the scissors. You allowed children to shine in the arts, and that was cemented with your friendship with our retired art teacher, Fern Berger. So I hope, Mary Ellen, as you're enjoying these early days of retirement, you're finding ways to keep your creative spirit alive. Keep painting, keep gluing, keep glittering, And above all, keep being true to the Wincote way. And thank you for reminding us to continually choose kindness. Congratulations. So next we'll have Principal Perez, Sheltonham Elementary School. Thanks a lot, Jim. Yeah. Tough act to follow. I think he had a book on every single person up here. But Maria Garcia. <laughs> Maria uh, retired this past uh, December, uh, 2022. Gosh, no, before. June 14th of 2022. That's how much he's missing. <laughs> well, you're think, always around. Well, I think we're always around. <laughs> um, Maria um, started in December of 2002 in the school district. Um, and those who know Maria, she, she was an emotional support paraprofessional for all of the years that she's been in the district. She's probably the most tenured emotional support para <laughs> um, in the district at the time. Um, and those who know Maria know that she's passionate and she wears her heart on her sleeve and she's not at, uh, at all in any way uh, will let you know how she feels at any moment in time. Um, and I got to work with Maria in 2018 when the program was moved from Glenside. She was at Glenside for many, many years. And I had an opportunity to work with her in uh, 2018. Um, and Maria and I worked well together because I know how to deal with strong Latin women, um, having been raised in a household full of them. Um, and one thing I could say about Maria is that she is passionate about working with students with disabilities and she will fight tooth and nail to support them. And a lot of that comes from how proud she is of her own daughter, Nina, and what she's done to support her own daughter uh, through her challenges um, and her accomplishments in her, in her life. Um, so I wanna take the opportunity to thank you uh, although we've just seen each other this week and this is the second time this week and Maria's and yep and Maria's always around and we want her to continue to be a staple at events at Sheltonham Elementary. Um, but I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to have worked with you and I wish you the, the very best as you continue to spend the well-deserved time with your family. Thank you. 
Thank you. And we'll see each other more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have one more individual um, I'd like to recognize. Um, Catherine Falso, or AKA Copy, as everyone uh, knows her. She was hired uh, by Cheltenham in September of 1993. Um, I've known Copy since my arrival at uh, Cheltenham Elementary in 2014. And I remember Copy, my first encounter with Copy was she was harvesting vegetables in the back of the building um, in one of the uh, planning beds that she helped to start within the building. Uh, Copy has worked, um, she has worked tirelessly um, in her time at, at Sheltonham to support uh, science and math programs in our school. She's connected with um, the Tukoni Tukoni Clean Water Initiatives um, to bring them uh, into our classrooms. Uh, she started the Autobahn Club at our school uh, to provide students opportunities to learn about native bird. Uh, species and ways in which we can protect them. Uh, Copy in her, um, in one of her last messages to some staff, she indicated that uh, she did not want any retirement recognition and she wanted anything, any funds to, uh, that are being collected uh, to protect the native bird populations um, in our community. So you can see where her passions lie. So I wish Copy the very best in her retirement and thank her for her service. Uh, to Sheltonham School District. Thank you. Okay. Next, we'll have Dr. Clark, Elkins Park Intermediary School. I know I'm giving too much direction. Good evening, everyone. I am Crystal Clark, and um, it brings me great privilege this evening to recognize these four individuals from Elkins Park Intermediate School, home of our fifth and sixth grade students. And I have a connection with each of them in very different ways. So you know how you know people from being around them for many years, but you really don't know them? Well, we all had facial recognition of each other, maybe knew small things about each other, but it wasn't until I joined Elkins Park that I saw how very special and individual and unique these people are. Now I wanna start with Ms. Smith. This is Sid Smith our school counselor, and she works with our fifth grade students. Now in August, when I was told that I was being transitioned to Elkins Park, I was in church and I'm gonna be honest, I was praying. <laughs> I was willing to take on the challenge, but feeling a little unsure about leaving the things that I had known for so many years and just transitioning with new people and new experiences. And so I was just pulling on faith. And Ms. Smith happened to be in church with me that day. And I don't know if she felt my energy, but she came up to me and had a conversation. And she said, you're going to be okay. We are so happy that you are coming and you're going to be all right. And it's that same kind of reassurance that she provided me that day. She actually said the words that I needed to hear. And it's that same level of reassurance that she brings to our students each and every day. She is an amazing counselor. So now I'll go to what I wrote about her. <laughs> Sid began her career at the high school and then brought her talents to EP. She is passionate about helping and guiding students. She's also a passionate aviator. 
She also enjoys her faith and her family. Not necessarily in that order. She can always be counted on to go the extra mile for any student in her care. The Leadership Academy is her pride and joy. And Sid, that is your legacy, and we are going to keep it going. She has helped many young men develop their leadership skills. So we wish you many happy days filled with some good hush puppies. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yes. <laughs> and if I could. Oh. <laughs> Miss Lisa Marlowe. Now this woman here is a talented author and historian. Years ago, while I was still a principal at Wincoop, I asked her, she wrote a book about the history of Cheltenham Township and all of our experiences and rich history regarding the Underground Railroad and Camp William Penn. And when I was trying to teach students about their local history and start the African-American History Bee, I called on Miss Marlowe to come to our school. Do you remember that? <laughs> and talk to our students. And they actually came dressed as soldiers from the Civil War. And they were so proud about sharing the rich heritage of the Lamont area right here in Cheltenham Township. So now here's what I wrote about you. Now, if she had a motto, it would be keeping history alive. Lisa was named the National History Channel Teacher of the Year in 2006. And in 2019, she received the Human and Civil Rights Award, educational leader from PSEA. My goal was to get our history out there, this history that was being forgotten from her time at EP, signing her name on the gym ceiling to her passion and knowledge of Cheltenham history Lisa has represented her community and alma mater well. EP will not be the same without her. Now, she went to EP, oh, retiring from EP. 1978. So you are a true EP Eagle, and we wish you well. <laughs> now, Mr. Altman. I had the pleasure of being his son Burl's principal. Like I said, I got a relationship with all of them. I remember Mr. Altman as a parent and as a paraprofessional, where he started his career in Cheltenham Township. And I'm not sure if you were a volunteer first before you became that paraprofessional, but he was always interested and involved and found ways to connect with students in this community. So when you live it and you speak it, then you gotta put your money where your mouth is. And it seems like that's what you did. You were always there, always interested and wanted the best for our township and for our students. And so you're truly a community leader. Now here's what I wrote about you. Andrew was kindness. He spent his career at Elkins Park working to give students an opportunity to have their voices heard. The EP newspaper that he sponsored has always informative, was always informative and filled with character. He is always ready and willing to help make EP a vibrant place full of wonderful learning opportunities. He's the man. We will miss his kind spirit. Thank you. And the software. Last but not least, Miss Paula Witherspoon. 
Now, Miss Witherspoon may not remember this, but in 2004, when I started at Wincote, you were a paraprofessional there. And you had a lot of advice that you shared with me <laughs> about what I should do in order to be a successful principal. And I just always found that you had a very honest and a very direct spirit about you. Whether we wanted to hear it or not, but Miss Witherspoon, you are one of the kindest, most giving people that I've had the pleasure of meeting in Cheltenham. Your bulletin boards and the time that you spend to make other people happy is unmatched. And I don't know if you've always been recognized for the giving that you've done. Well, you did. I also uh, mothered unofficially many children that went through uh, the Cheltenham school system in my home because of their situations in their home. All right. Well, we when we think of Paula, Miss Witherspoon, the word that comes to my mind is caring. Your caring and kindness shine out throughout and everything you do, your hard work is all underscored by your caring spirit. EP will not be the same without you. We'll miss you. Mm -hmm. So for all of them, their collective influence on EP's world will forever be felt. They are a part of the fabric of our Elkins Park community. And I am always looking for volunteers. So I expect <laughs> to see you back. All right, congratulations to all of you. Oh, Paula says she was an EP graduate. Wow. Graduated from Yes. Next, could we have Ms. Jane Dupree come to the podium, Glenside Elementary School? So Ms. Dupree was back there wondering, I don't see anyone here from Glenside, I don't know if they remembered, I don't know if they're gonna honor me, but we got you covered. So I, I, I just reached out uh, to Glenside and I wanna read a couple of the statements uh, that uh, colleagues have written about Mr. B, uh, Dupree. And she actually retired uh, last June, but she's come back today. This is important to her. She's worked a lot of years in our district and she deserves to be honored in the same fashion as everyone else. So this is what someone said about our Miss Jane Dupree. The day I met Jane Dupree, my family grew up, grew by one. To me personally, for 23 years, she was so much more than my classroom assistant. She was a friend, a confidant, my cheerleader, a supporter, and my life is richer for having her in it. There's no way to sum up what Jane meant to me and the children she worked with. She touched thousands of lives with her warmth and kindness, and there was no better way for me or the children to start our days than with a bright smile and a warm good morning from Jane. Throughout the 23 years we worked together, Jane helped babies become independent thinkers and doers. She tied thousands of shoes, applied hundreds of Band-Aids, and offered tissues to many. There is no replacing Jane because she is 
one of a kind. And they broke the mold when they made her. Tonight, with love in our hearts and smiles on our faces, we celebrate Jane and the legacy she left at Glenside Elementary and in Cheltenham School District. That was written by Susan Dunham, second grade teacher at Glenside. We have one more, and this is the last. I'm trying to meta, uh, model for Principal Metcalf, who's coming up next. And he has about six retirees. Um, Although we didn't work together long, I felt very lucky to have crossed paths with Jane Dupree. She welcomed me and anyone she met with open arms. She was one of the most dedicated kindergarten assistants Glenside Elementary School has had with the 27 years of service. I wish more people knew her story because they will learn she is a strong, hardworking, faithful woman with the most caring heart. Here are a few words to describe Jane Dupree, and it's Jane Dupree, how this works. Joyful, approachable, nourishing, extremely faithful. That's Jane. Dedicated, upbeat, patient, reliable, encouraging, essential part of Glenside. That's Dupree. Ms. Dupree, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you did to make our year together such a joyful experience. I wish you all the best in retirement. And that was from Kirby Brown, kindergarten teacher at Glenside Elementary. So congratulations to you. I'm gonna get a picture of this one. Okay. Good evening. All right, so the first uh, retiree I have for Super Middle School is Miss Barbara Newton, who is not present. Um, but I will continue on and read um, what we had to say about her. So I met Miss Newton uh, during my first year as principal of Cedarbrook. She was a dedicated staff member uh, who served as grandmother to all of our scholars. She garnered respect from our staff and scholars and loved all of our children as if they were her own. She spent time getting to know our scholars and often surprised them by bringing treats. Seeing her give a scholar a hug, a pat on the back, and giving words of encouragement was a frequent occurrence for Ms. Newton. We were saddened last year um, when she informed us that she would not be returning. Uh, we know it was a difficult decision for her to make, but we are also forever grateful for her service to our school, our staff, and our scholars. So thank you, Ms. Newton. Next up, we have Ms. McClinney. So Ms. McClinney was a huge contributor to Cedarbrook Middle School. She served as both a one-to-one -one and classroom paraprofessional. She was always willing to assist in whatever capacity was needed and was seen daily, ensuring that our bus and parent drop-offs and pickups ran smoothly. So if you know Cedarbrook and our circle and our space, that's a very important part of, uh, of our job in ensuring safety for our scholars and parents. Um, as we've had different routes <laughs> for that school. Um, so making sure they run smoothly is very important. So I appreciate that. You could always count on Ms. McClinney being punctual, which meant being early. She always had a warm smile and greeted everyone. She had a natural ability to connect with all of our scholars and is remembered for always making time to ask her colleagues about their days and their families. Her absence was missed by all, and we thank her for her commitment to the success of Cedarbrook Scholars. Thank you. I don't believe Ms. Miller is here. Um, Ms. Miller actually had a capacity at a number of different schools as she served as a one-to-one. -one. Um, so I've known Ms. Miller prior to me returning to the Shelton School District. Um, she was an avid rule follower, for sure. You told Ms. Miller how to support a scholar. She always followed it through 100% to the T. She worked extremely well with our scholars. And the thing I remember most about Ms. Miller is that she was always, or excuse me, never a pushover. She was very firm kind and very much dedicated to her work. Um, and I actually met Ms. Miller when I was a teacher at Shelton High School, All right? So she's been around for a nice time. So um, we are very thankful for the service that she gave and uh, you know, hope she enjoys her retirement. So I have two more teachers and I don't believe either of them are here, um, but the next one, uh, Tim Strasser. 
Um, so when I was a math teacher at Sheltonham High School, Tim Strasser was a teacher at Cedarbrook. So I was fortunate to know Tim Strasser during my days as a teacher at Sheltonham High School. Tim was an extremely intelligent man. Not only taught math, but also taught STEM to our scholars at Seabrook Middle School. Tim was very supportive of our Seabrook Middle School, even coming back to teach a class during his last 20 days of school, this current school year, as we had a teacher that was out on military leave. So we're very truly appreciative for all of his support, his body of work, and his love for his scholars and fellow staff members. So thank you, Tim. And again, Ms. Peter Michael, um, I had the opportunity to be a teacher when she was actually teaching in the Shotland School District as well. Uh, so Cedarbrook Middle School and Shotland High School, uh, for Ms. Peter Michael, um, I have known for a very long time. It's been a pleasure to see her love of children and language continue to be at the top of the priority, even as she neared her retirement. She was extremely dedicated to her scholars and her German language program. While she was unique as the only teacher teaching the language and split between two schools, she never complained and always gave her scholars the best of her each and every day. Thank you, Ms. Peter Michael. Thank you, Principal Metcalf. I, I don't want Mr. Stiletti to get any more nervous as he's filling in as our executive director for facilities. So before we go to high school, I'm gonna ask Mr. Stiletti, uh, to come to the podium. He has a couple retirees in our facilities uh, department that he wants to recognize uh, facilities and maintenance. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to recognize Paul Thomas. He's not here tonight. He was our district wide master plumber. He was with the district for 10 years. Paul has always been reliable and had a great deal of knowledge when it came to plumbing. So in behalf of Tim and myself and the facility department, we would like to thank, thank, thank you for your hard work and dedication to the students, staff, and facility of Cheltenham School District. Bruce Tilly is not here tonight. Bruce Tilly was a custodian with Cheltenham School District for eight years. He started at Cheltenham High School and then Glenside Elementary. Bruce has always been hardworking, commit, committed to making sure of schools buildings were always clean for the students, staff. Thank you for your dedication of the school district. Thank you. And I thank all the retirees as Mr. DeAndrea transitions to the podium uh, for just hanging in and honoring uh, at every level of uh, those individuals who are retiring. Uh, I think that speaks volumes for who we are as a district. Uh, we have Principal DeAndrea Sheltonham uh, High School. Thank you, Dr. Scriven. I'm gonna start with uh, two staff members who are here with us this evening, starting with uh, Lisa Serapo. She and I only had the opportunity to work together for a few months at the beginning of this year. Um, but I really appreciate her innumerable contributions to Sheltonham High School during the time that she was there. Um, she served for almost 25 years as a health and PE teacher. And what is most notable about her is she had the reputation in the department of being the one that was the most organized and making sure that everybody else in the department was on task, got things done on time. And that translated to the classroom as well because she would organize um, elaborate tournaments and brackets in the different racket sports that she taught. And that was a great way to keep students engaged in the classroom. In addition, she was a swimming and tennis coach um, in her previous school district. So she was the one who revitalized the lifeguarding program at the high school. In the short time I knew her, I could really see the clear way that she built excellent relationships with students and the care that she had in every interaction with students and uh, other staff members. So congratulations and thank you for everything. Thank you. Next, I'll invite um, Dave Burton. 
um, who has 27 years of experience in the school district. So last summer when I was starting as principal of Sheltonham High School, one of the things that I did was um, send out um, a sign up link where individual staff members could sign up to meet with me for 30 to 45 minutes, just so I could start to build individual relationships with staff members. And one of the common themes in all my initial conversations was, you really need to talk to Dave Burton. He's the one who really knows what's going on. He's been at the school. He's well-respected. And fortunately, later in the summer, Dave did sign up for one of the times. So we had an opportunity to meet. We had a 30 minute time scheduled and we met for almost two hours. We had a great conversation um, about everything he has done in his perspective, but he's just truly amazing. And then a couple of weeks later, we were uh, getting ready for in service. And so it was gonna be my first time to have the opportunity to talk to all staff together. And people said, well, you should have Dave Burton do some team building activities. And I was like, that makes me a little bit nervous to have somebody that I barely know come up in front of all the staff. Like, how is this going to be received? But I said, okay, we'll go ahead and with this. And it was truly extraordinary um, and really representative of who Dave is because he is so good at building connections among others. That was the best part of the in-service. Um, last year, the 20 minutes that Dave spent helping all the staff members to reconnect with one another. Um, he's somebody that if you know him or get to know him, he's always full of energy and optimism what he does outside the classroom in terms of motivating and inspiring students through various activities um, or lending his support in any way that he can help out. He cares very deeply about the school and about each of our students at the school. He also supported our awesome blue and gold event for many years as an MC with his very infectious um, school spirit. Um, and as I said, he's done a lot with team building throughout the years, and he's going to be very deeply missed for all of his contributions and really his insight and historical perspective on the school. So thank you for everything, Dave, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. We also have um, four other staff members who were not able to be here this evening, um, who I will speak briefly about, starting with Sandra DeMoore. Um, she served the district for 20 years as a paraprofessional. She was a one-on-one -on -one paraeducator in all seven buildings at different times throughout her career. And she finished her career at Cheltenham High School as a one-on-one -on -one paraeducator. And what was most notable about her is she would sit in classes all throughout the day taking copious notes on her own so that she could be better prepared to review the content and support her students. So she was exceptionally hardworking, detail oriented, and really went way above and beyond to make sure that she was prepared to best make sure that her students had what they needed, the ones that she was working with. So congratulations, Sandra, and thank you for your contributions. Next, we have Brian Hollis, who has 27 years of experience. He started in 1995 as a seventh grade social studies teacher, and during his time at the high school has been teaching a variety of social studies courses. In particular, he has been the expert and the go-to person for all of our economics courses, including um, a variety of economics courses that he has created, as well as AP microeconomics and AP microeconomics. AP macroeconomics and AP microeconomics. And because of his relationships with students, um, his classrooms always filled at lunchtime with students who are coming not only to get extra help, but have connected with him and really enjoy talking to him about coursework, but also things that are going on with them outside of school. So he builds great relationships with students. And he's also, during his time at the high school, sponsored a number of extracurricular activities. So we're very thankful for everything he has done. And congratulations to Brian. Sandra Schur um, was in the district for 30 years. Most of her career was spent at Cedarbrook Middle School and she finished this past fall at the high school as a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional as well. Um, she was someone that was known for her commitment to students. She would go out of her way to make sure she got whatever answer, whatever she needed for any student that she was supported and the way that she would work with the teachers in each classroom where that particular student was um, to make sure they had what they needed. So she really went above and beyond in those ways um, and definitely has been missed. She was at the school at the beginning of the year for about a month before she officially retired. So congratulations to Sandra. And then the final retiree from Sheltonham High School is Dolly Stafford, um, who has only been with us for uh, three years, um, but it's most notable that she came to the school in the early stages of the pandemic, which is a really, really hard time to start any transition. Um, and she did a really good job, uh, despite all the challenges of the pandemic, connecting, connecting with other staff members, building relationships with students and families, and really making significant contributions to our special education department. And so while she was only with us for a short time, she really did a lot and we're very grateful to her for that. So congratulations to Dolly as well.
Thank you, Principal DeAndrea. Uh, before I turn it back over to our board president, I would ask uh, Principal Perez if you could please stand. I'm always cognizant of uh, those individuals that deserve recognition. Um, and Principal Perez, this is his last official duty uh, with us um, in Shelton School District. As you know, after eight years of service uh, at the helm at Sheltonham Elementary, uh, he's moving uh, in a different direction. Uh, so I just wanted to take a time to acknowledge and thank you uh, for your leadership and for your service uh, to Sheltonham School District. Yeah. I think our principals have done an outstanding job acknowledging teachers. I had an opportunity to acknowledge them personally uh, during our dinner uh, prior to uh, this recognition. Uh, I see they're ready because I gave them marching orders while we were in the room, but uh, Madam Chair would like to open any uh, brief comments to the board uh, at this time before they exit the building. Ms. Hayward. Yes, Ms. Henry, I didn't do the math correctly, I'm sure, but I know that there is at least 300, over 350 years of collective experience from all of the retirees, which is incredible, really incredible. I wanted to particularly mention a couple of the retirees that my children's lives have been touched by, and those are Ms. Witherspoon, Ms. Marlowe, Mr. Buckingham, Ms. Smith, Ms. Rue. Ms. Serapo, Mr. Burton, and Mr. Hollow. Lots of teachers, lots of counselors that have had a big impact in my children's lives. So I personally thank you. Thank you. No other board members? Leah. Oh, Leah. <laughs> I will try to be brief as well. Um, I just want to quickly, when I look at the five uh, staff members that are retiring from Wincote, um, I think about oh, only one, of, well, two of those people have taught my child, and this is good, this past year uh, with my son, Jack, and my family um, will be forever indebted to you for this one year. It was that amazing. So thank you. We will miss you a lot. Um, Mrs. Perry was two of my children's kindergarten aides and everything Mr. Taylor said about her was absolutely true. And I miss seeing that twinkle in her eye as well. Um, but Mr. Buckingham, Mrs. Rue, Mrs. Avila, these are children, you know, people my children did not, they interacted with on a daily basis, but I feel like all five of them, I got to know them just as a parent that got to be in the building. And I feel very lucky to have gotten to know, know all five of them and know enough about them to ask about something personal in their life, you know, connecting like that um, as a parent in the building uh, was really an honor of mine. Um, quickly, uh, Elkins Park School, uh, I would just like to mention Ms. Marlowe, who taught two of my two oldest daughters. Uh, I think she has stepped out, but um, again, everything that was said about her is true. They both had amazing years. She taught my oldest during the pandemic and a very tricky time, but she did it well, made it fun. And she uh, was part of the reason my kids were excited to go to school every morning in sixth grade. So thank you, Mrs. Marlowe. Thank you, Ms. Mulhern. Any other comments, Mr. Burdell Williams? Yep. Um, I'll be very, um, very brief. So just a, a couple uh, words for some just reflection on impact that some of the educators who are retiring had on. On my family um, and just on the general community, uh, Mr. Pre saw my son uh, Quentin uh, as a as as he was growing up uh, as as a as a as a kindergartner, um, and I appreciated the patient approach uh, with him. Um, value that to this day. She's laughing. <laughs> Patience, right? <laughs> um, and uh, just again, uh, my family, we're very appreciative. We had so many great things to say uh, just like every day throughout that entire kindergarten experience. And I know it wasn't just him. It was very many other students who were impacted as well. So uh, thank you. Um, Sid Smith, your impact with the leadership program over at EP um, is broad. There's a, a large number of of young men in this world who were impacted by your contribution to not only develop the program, but continue um, with the level of efficacy that it has for so long and continuing to keep those programs enriching for, for our students. So thank you. Uh, Ms. Marlowe, I just met you maybe a week ago, um, but um, uh, if 
you know, being somebody who was in line to get ice cream at Sprinkles meant anything. Um, everybody at this table knows how much I enjoyed that experience. Um, but just the connection that you had with your students was was very evident in that moment. Um, I heard so many good things about you that day that I was a little bit like, you know, how come I didn't have that experience for my kids? But I think the impact for uh, for the remainder of the district and any children you touch is absolutely felt. And you could tell just in that moment, all of the great things that the, the parents and the students had to say about you. So again, thank you for your contribution. And that's my last couple of words. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Bertel Williams. Dr. Scriven. Yeah, Dr. Smith, I know we have one administrative position, Dr. Gallagher. So if you'd like to. Good evening, everyone. I am honored to acknowledge Dr. Craig, our special education director, formerly known as Dr. Gallagher. She has gotten married since she left us. As she embarks on a new chapter of her life, Throughout her tenure, Dr. Craig has been a beacon of compassion, knowledge, and unwavering commitment to students with special needs. She has impacted countless lives, shaping the educational landscape and fostering an inclusive environment. I am privileged to have had the opportunity to work alongside such an exceptional individual and educator. Dr. Craig, congratulations on your retirement and may you enjoy the well-deserved rest and fulfillment that lie ahead. Thank you. So as I know our retirees will probably be exiting, I'll give you all an opportunity to do that, but you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> They're not taking me up on that. <laughs> At this time, while our retirees are exiting, I want to invite uh, Jay Carr uh, to the podium. She is our new student council president for <laughs> next year. And I want to give her the opportunity to introduce our other student guests that have joined us uh, this evening prior to them making their student report. So welcome and the podium is yours. Um, okay, I had to make sure it was on. Um, good evening, Shellingham School Board Directors and Dr. Skiven. My name is Jade Carr and I'm an upcoming senior and I'm the new student council president at Shellingham High School. Um, this is our chief of staff. And our, sorry, and our two um, school board liaison. Um, hi, Ooh. my name is Emma Zubiru, and I'm one of the incoming school board liaisons. My name is Shalom Sukar. I'm also a liaison, and I'm a rising senior. Thank you. Um, we are very excited to work with you guys for the school year and to update you on things that go throughout the school. And um, our school chief of staff will continue with our goals for our school year. Nice meeting y'all. <laughs> Good evening, school board. My name is Brianna Wilson and I'm a incoming junior and I'm also the new chief of staff for this year. We had our first meeting with student council leadership this past week. With input from the student body and our committee members, we hope to tackle more issues and help make positive change at Shellingham High School this year. At the beginning of next school year, we'll be focused on coordinating an activity fair to get more or less involved people into new clubs and extracurricular activities. And we will also be prepping for all the activities during homecoming week, which will be scheduled for the last week of September. And we would also like to be working with Dr. Scriven again this year to see how we can help him with his mission of connecting less involved members of our school with activities. And that is all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we look forward to working with you all in the upcoming school year. 
Uh, the board will be myself, Pam Henry, president. We'll be working with Dr. Scriven and Mr. DeAndrea to set up some time for us to all meet officially um, when school begins. So enjoy your summer. Thank you for taking time out. We, we'll be having monthly, if not by weekly meetings. So it's exciting uh, to lay eyes on you. I'm looking forward uh, to our work. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and it looks like you guys are ready. So uh, thanks for coming out, and I echo the sentiments. Definitely enjoy your summer. Well earned. Thank you. So that served as our uh, student representative's report. I didn't announce it officially, but yes, thank you. Um, we have a superintendent's report, Dr. Scriven. So good evening, and it's my honor as always to bring forth the superintendent report. I hope the first slide, and we can go to the next one, Mr. Day. So we've acknowledged our uh, retirees. The, the slide, the picture that is actually missing as I did an upgrade uh, based on a uh, correspondence I received was for our Sheltonham track team. Um, if you look on the web, you'll see the picture. It's the same exact picture. Uh, but I really wanted to acknowledge both the boys and the girls track team. Uh, Coach Bill, Dr. Bill, who's one of the coaches, has been here forever. Uh, and I don't say that in the negative. It was a powerful impact on my life uh, as he was one of my football coaches when I attended Sheltonham. So that just puts in perspective uh, how long uh, he's been uh, touching lives. So our both teams, both boys and girls, received the Suburban One Freedom Division Championship uh, at Plymouth White Marsh. They won 12 out of 18 events. Uh, the boys tallied 252 points, and the girls outpaced the competition with 186 points. So there you go. You found it. You're good. Appreciate it. Uh, so I just really wanted to take a moment uh, to acknowledge them. Now uh, we can kind of get down to business as you go to the next slide. Dr. Scriven, before you go to the next slide, I um, of course it's kind of, it's hard to get students to come out at the end of the year, but for those students who didn't graduate mm -hmm. that may be here, perhaps we can get them to come in at the beginning of the school year um, in September and make a formal acknowledgement of them and their achievement for the track team. For the track team, okay. yes. Just want to give some updates uh, in terms of really laying the foundation for the direction uh, that we're moving. I'm very fortunate where I have a couple board members who are here uh, at the table. Uh, I will acknowledge Leah Mahern and, and Jenny Lohman who are actually serving uh, on this branding um, task force initiative. And I wanted to present it to the full board because it is going to help uh, define our work. And as you see, I, I do not read to, to grown folks, but what is a brand? Um, bottom line, what do others say about us, right? Uh, we have uh, our second uh, branding uh, meeting uh, on the 15th, which is this week, I believe Thursday. Uh, we, were, we will dive a little deeper uh, into this work. If we go to the next slide, and, and you guys will have a hard time um, reading the the uh, the axis, um, but I, I can summate. Uh, when you, individuals think about Sheltonham, and this is what has really come out of where we are in our branding journey, diversity is what really... Uh, resonates with the majority of the members in our community. We have a cross-pollination of members that are part of this task force doing this work. Uh, I would say right around 28 um, individuals, students, uh, teachers, uh, board members, community members, uh, stakeholders are all uh, a part of this process. Uh, they have uh, taken a deep dive 
uh, in really analyzing and reviewing some of the perceptual data that we have received from uh, the larger community around uh, Cheltenham. Uh, what's working, uh, what's not, what potential implications and challenges exist. Uh, and part of the role and a piece that is, is kind of, of missing um, that is coming out of this really speaks to our core values and beliefs. And uh, it's something that you're gonna see um, as part of the branding um, part of this presentation, um, but it's also something uh, that I'm going to address as I move forward in terms of marching orders with instructionally uh, what moving forward is going to look like um, for us. If you go to the next slide, please. And I just want you to look at the top. It represents um, the individuals that took part in the survey. So uh, you had 289 parents, 88 staff, 11 students, 10 alum, and 34 community members. I just wanted to put in context the who that took the initial uh, survey. And this is just a baseline snapshot of the information uh, that we received uh, based on the perceptions of these individuals. So we have diversity, but then we have student outcomes. Um, we have our teachers are outstanding, and then we have student outcomes. And I'm not going to quantify what I mean just by student outcomes. Uh, I'm going to let the branding committee continue to uh, get to the essence of what we really say we stand for and start to identify um, how we're going to really accomplish all um, it is that we say um, we want to do. Uh, but high level, I, I just want you to understand uh, that this is significant work because at least we're having the conversation. Uh, it's, uh, it's a process which puts us in a vulnerable state um, because we're doing a self-reflection of who we are and what we say we stand for. Uh, so there will be updates. I just wanted to put this out there that this work is happening right here and right now. Um, and I, I may even ask Ms. Malhorn or Ms. Lohman um, to co-present uh, some of this as we move forward uh, because it's an extremely important initiative which is going to guide um, and fall neatly under uh, some of the, the goals which have uh, been identified in our strategic plan. We can go to the next slide. So high level, uh, just really wanted to talk to you about what I've been unpacking, uh, what the branding um, committee is unpacking, and really as a central office team, what we're evaluating uh, currently. Uh, we've done an awesome job, I believe, um, identifying what our current vision and mission is. I, I think we're going to have some additional work. And that's what I said. I, I, we, we stated that our strategic plan was going to be a fluid working document, not something that just went on the shelf. I just alluded to one piece, core beliefs and values. It's kind of hard uh, to move forward where we don't call out what our core beliefs and values are. Um, so that's potentially an uh, upgrade uh, that I would recommend. Um, secondly, as I'm really looking at identifying um, what we unpack from an instructional standpoint in terms of strengths, um, in terms of growth areas, do they align to our vision and mission? Uh, so we're going to have to take a look at does our vision and mission truly encompass what we're setting forth to do um, as a district around instructional outcomes. That's a wondering right now and something that we will continue to look at and, and see if we need to um, pivot. If we go to the next slide. Uh, this is interesting. This is th This is not a knock. This is just a reality, right? Um, random acts of improvement. 
when we say that, let me let me just really put that in context. Part of my work is really identifying silos. And, and in many areas, we have been operating in silos. We have great best practices that are happening in individual schools, uh, but none of it is necessarily systemic in all schools. Uh, and what I'm really trying uh, to address, where you look at this slide, where arrows are going every which way, to the next slide, where arrows are all pointed the right direction, it, it really speaks to uh, the systemic processes and protocols that we need to have in place around how we're doing the work. And that's part of what we're unpacking uh, right now. Um, some of the board members have asked some very intuitive questions uh, around our data protocols. Um, and this is my effort to kind of let you know the direction uh, that we're moving in. Uh, this is plan, implement, evaluate, improve. You guys know for me, it's plan, do, study, act. Um, it's the same um, and it's the continuous improvement cycle that we will be embarking on. Next slide, please. This is really important. This is the multiple measures. When we talk about having clear pathways uh, and making sure that we're starting at uh, our early grade with programmatically making sure that we have pathways leading students towards higher level courses, uh, advanced placement, honors. What does that look like? Um, our portrait of a graduate is one of the goals that we have under our strategic plan. Uh, part of our work this year will be really identifying as our students are matriculating K through 12, what are the multiple measures that we should be looking at at each grade? And that's something uh, that we are not going to unpack in isolation. We're going to be working collaboratively with our respective schools to identify exactly what that looks like, where a first grader matriculated to second, what are those um, key components um, that they should be able to demonstrate mastery on, which shows that they're uh, actually prepared. Um, to transition to that next level. Uh, so look forward to hearing a lot more and seeing this reflected as we unpack the work. Next slide, please. When we talk about, uh, we used to call it problem of practice. Um, this is simply a process to really identifying any perceived problem of practice that may come to light when you're doing a comprehensive needs assessment, right? So you've identified that there's a problem. This is the process that takes you through um, really coming up uh, with a fluid cycle that everyone can consistently use to address whatever that identified um, problem is. So this is all uh, can be uploaded in board docs. If it's not, I'm not gonna, I can't take time with our retirees to unpack it all. But board definitely uh, review that. And last but not least, I have to speak to our professional learning community. I've come in with the approach of using data as a flashlight and not a hammer. I I'm not uh, trying to drill down to teacher level to try to find fault. That's that's not the work. That's not the approach um, that I'm taking. I'm really looking at, as a collective group, how do we unpack what our professional learning community should look like and how they should be operationalized. This is a fluid system um, that shows how we go about doing that work. We had a two-day retreat, uh, May 24th and May 25th, where we met with all of our building principals and really went through high level how they would facilitate this process. Our goal is to build capacity in our building principles so they can build capacity in our instructional leadership teams at the respective schools who will build capacity in individual teachers that are by grade and content operating in these professional learning communities where we see a transference 
to our students in the classrooms day in and day out with the ultimate goal of seeing increased student outcomes. So I'm trying to hit this quick, fast, and in a hurry, um, but I hope that it gives a snapshot of the direction that we're gonna be moving. That concludes my board report, I believe. Yes, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scriven. We have the solicitor's report, Mr. Diazia. Yes, thank you. There have been two executive sessions since the last public meeting of the board. The board met on June 6th in executive session to discuss matters of school safety. Uh, that executive session was led by the district safety and security coordinator, which is uh, a requirement of law for that uh, session to be held annually. The board also met this evening prior to tonight's uh, public meeting briefly to discuss matters of administrative staffing personnel uh, for next year. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diazio. We have public comments on agenda items only. If you are in the audience and wish to make a comment, you can come to the podium, state your name and where you reside in the district before making your comment or question. If you are watching online, streaming, or in the Zoom room, or otherwise, there's nobody on? Okay. All right. So we will move on to the approval of minutes. From the May 29th, 2023 uh, minutes, can I have a motion to approve? So move, Mr. Cohen. Second, Mr. Fishbein. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Next, we have our committee reports, financial affairs. Is me, give me a second to pull up my report. The financial affairs meeting was held on June 6, 2023. The agenda included uh, a review of the interim financial statements. Uh, noting, and, and that information is all posted, but I do want to note a fund balance increase of $4,229,371. So that was a, a significant, significant um, increase to our fund balance. The updated projected final budget for the 2023-2024 school year projected total expenditures of $132,536,205. This includes the American Rescue Plan tax increase of 1.1%, which is required to balance the budget. I do want to note that the Act 1 index allowed us to go uh, to 4.10% increase. However, because of um, our the state of our budget, we were um, able to only have a 1.1% increase. Tonight, we will be voting to approve the 2023-2024 final proposed budget. And we will also be voting to improve items as listed on the consent agenda for real estate taxes, authorization depositories, purchasing, annual contracts, architectural contract, and food service approvals. Our next meeting will resume in August of 2024. And that concludes my report. The educational affairs report will be provided by Ms. Mulhern. Sure, thank you. Um, <clears throat> with Co-Chair Jennifer Lohman presiding, the Educational Affairs Committee met in person and via Zoom on Wednesday, May 17th. Uh, at the meeting, building principals from all seven schools or a representative uh, provided a follow-up to their fall presentation on school improvement planning. The full presentation, including video recording and the slide deck that has all of the uh, data points and finer details, can be found on um, uh, the Education Department's uh, portion of the CSD website. Um, I will not get into the weeds on data points in, at this meeting, but I do invite you to look at the presentation if you'd like to see them. And some things to keep in mind when you look at this data or any other data uh, and some uh, highlights from the meeting include that uh, I think Mr. Lytle said it first, but it sounded like we all were in agreement, uh, including administrators and board members, that behind each data point is a child, uh, and each child is more than one test or one data point, and this is only a snapshot. We try to review that a lot to remind 
remind ourselves that as important as the data is, uh, that th those are real, real children <laughs> behind those numbers. Um, each school shared uh, different plans and targets that they have been working on. Some have worked with outside groups like the Penn Literacy Network. Some had before or after school tutoring or support implemented. Many schools are building out uh, on their focus on small group instruction and uh, building a culture around using data in meaningful ways, uh, improving professional learning communities and uh, the way that they are organized and used within individual schools. Um, I want to thank all of the building principals and the vice principals uh, for gathering and presenting this data. I know that it was a lot of work. Uh, thank you also to Dr. Smith and her office for supporting uh, the principals in that effort. Um, as a district, uh, central administration, we are also improving the ways in which staff and administrator, administrators can access data and reports so that they can be more useful, readily available. Uh, the next educational affairs meeting is tomorrow night, Wednesday, June 14th at 7 p.m. We will be uh, meeting via Zoom and in person, and we will be discussing uh, work in progress so far on our brand new strategic plan, uh, work that has been done in each pillar so far, and where we are heading for the upcoming uh, academic year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Mulhern. Eastern Center for Arts and Technology, Mr. Burdell Williams. Thank you, Ms. Henry. Uh, I typically promise to keep my reports brief. Tonight, I can't make that same promise, unfortunately. So uh, everybody bear with me. The reason why tonight's report um, is not brief uh, is because uh, for the month of May, uh, Kaya Levy, a Cheltenham High School senior, was awarded the May 2023 uh, Eastern Center for Arts and Technology Student of the Month Award. And I want to be able to share um, all of the fine details of the, the person that Kaya is uh, to not just share with the board, but also with the community. So we are well aware of the uh, impact that our students are having uh, around Montgomery County and abroad. Uh, Kaya is being recognized for her outstanding work in Eastern's Allied Health Program. Um, Kaya knew that she enjoyed helping people and decided to focus on learning more about a career in nursing during the pandemic. Um, her words, people needed help and nurses were at the front lines caring for patients in such an uncertain time. She heard about the Allied Health program through a presentation at her high school, and she felt as though Allied Health would be a good opportunity for her to explore the possibility of a career in nursing and to find out if this was something she really wanted to do with her career. At Eastern, Kaya is a top student. She's inquisitive, engaged in class, and always willing to help others. Through the Allied Health Program, Kaya is certified in Healthcare Provider Basic Life Support, CPR and AED, and Naloxone Administration to prevent opioid overdose. She received first place in Skills USA District Competition for customer service and recently completed, competed at the state level. She excelled in the Allied Health Medical Terminology Dual Enrollment Course in partnership with Montgomery County Community College and has earned three college credits. At Cheltenham High School, she is an honor roll student and she participates in the Black Scholars Program, the Positive Behavior Intervention Support Leadership Team and is a cheerleader. Kai is very supportive and inclusive of others. This is from, uh, from her Allied Health instructor, Ms. Allison Lotso. Uh, Kaya is very supportive and inclusive of others and listens, listens intently to, the, to support the contributions of her peers. She is a student leader and consistently displays professionalism. After Eastern and Cheltenham High School, Kaya plans to attend Montgomery County Community College for two years and then transfer to the Howard University uh, or Duquesne University to complete her nursing degree. She also plans to continue her education further to earn her master's degree. Congratulations to Kaya and to Cheltenham High School for supporting Kaya and her journey uh, at Eastern Center for Arts and Technology. Um, in between uh, the May Student of the Month presentation, uh, as well as the uh, next aspect of the meeting that I want to share, which was Eastern's first National Technical Honor Society induction, um, there were a number of administrative approvals. Um, in the professional, uh, as, as well as a number of um, approval of a number of donations and summer interns. And now on to Eastern's first National Technical Honor Society induction. Outstanding career in technical education students at Eastern 
were honored as the first inductees into the National Technical Honor Society, the Honor Society for Career and Technical Education. 20 students were inducted for membership in this cohort based on their skill development and academic achievement in their career and technical careers. Of the 20 students, four of those students were Cheltenham High School students. I want to thank, uh, sorry, I want to acknowledge all 20 students, but also want to acknowledge uh, in some fine detail the students from Cheltenham High School that I had a chance to actually meet on this particular occasion. Uh, first, uh, Marin Goldfarb, I'm doing this in alphabetical order as well. Uh, Marin Goldfarb, who was recognized for um, her success in design, photography, and illustration. There was Henry Heath who was acknowledged for his uh, achievements in networking and cybersecurity. There was Anthony George, who was acknowledged for his, his successes in electrical technology, as well as oh, Gabriel Rodriguez, who was acknowledged for uh, his contribution to construction technology. Um, the next meeting of the Eastern Center for Arts and Technology is on June 21st at 8 p.m. via Zoom. The link can be found on Eastern's website at eastech.org. Congratulations to all of our Cheltenham students for their achievement. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. We have the MCIU report, Ms. Lohman. Thank you, Ms. Henry. The MCIU board met on Wednesday, May 24th, 2023 at 6.45 p.m. in person at the MCIU's main offices in Norristown and over Zoom. The Montgomery County Intermediate Unit conducted its annual retirement appreciation celebration that evening to recognize and honor the many accomplishments and years of service of um, the IU's five retirees this year. The... Um, MCIU Office of Professional Learning then announced the receipt of an environmental grant in the amount of $29,789 $29, that will be used for the creation of an environmental mobile lab to go around to districts in, this, in the um, intermediate unit. It looks like a very, very cool thing that's going to be happening with that environmental lab. Um, so that should be fun. Um, the IU leadership team is working together with other intermediate units to develop innovative solutions to the educator shortage crisis in Pennsylvania. And then the program highlight that we received from IU staff was from the IU's Office of Business Services, which presented an overview of the IU's food service program, um, which has several different elements to it and includes the child and adult care food program, the summer food service program, and the school nutrition program. So the IU actually provides a lot of um, food services and nutrition programs to the, the students and families it serves. Um, the IU board accepted a number of, uh, approved a number of budgets for a variety of other programs. Um, the board also approved the acceptance of bids for general construction and other um, subcontracts for the th uh, 375 Morris Road project in Lansdale that the IU has been working on. Um, the other, there were a lot of budget approvals, um, acceptance of a donation, and um, the uh, final thing is the, um, that I always kind of mentioned because the IU has been struggling with retaining staff, um, the human resources updates. Um, the IU actually had 11 new employees this past month, only four resignations and one retirement. So it's actually in the positive this, year, this month with this employment. Um, and the next board meeting will be held in person um, and over Zoom on Wednesday, June 28th, 2023 at 6.45 p.m. at the IU's main offices in Norristown. This is my report. Thank you, Ms. Lohman. Facilities report will be provided by Mr. Burdell Williams. Thank you, Ms. Henry. In order to uh, keep things relatively brief and make sure I had enough time during uh, my Eastern Center for Arts and Technology report, I will just um, share broadly with the community that the Facilities Committee uh, met uh, last week on June 6th, and the agenda included summer projects that are going to be happening across the district, in including a relatively large fire alarm upgrade that's happening at the high school to 
uh, help. I, we're, we're hopeful that that will eliminate uh, a lot of the nuisance alarms that have been experienced over the last few years and keep the uh, keep the school building a, a little bit more manageable uh, state, but also very safe as well, as those life safety systems are critically important, um, as well as some e, uh, LED light conversions. Um, over at Elkins Park, a similar LED light conversion is happening. Um, the district has been on the path to uh, convert as many LED lights, as many of our standard lights or fluorescent bulb lights uh, to LEDs for a number of years with support of grants from PICO um, and are continuing that work right now uh, in, the, in the mode of sustainability. Um, the committee also then uh, reviewed a somewhat of a scope of the high school stadium renovation and maintenance project. Um, there are lots of fine details in the uh, in the presentation that is shared online. Um, the meeting then ended with a discussion on progress of the conversion over to uh, our new work order system, which is underway but was delayed a little, uh, but is expected to continue again and, and, and be completed before the start of next school year. Um, the next facilities committee meeting I don't think has been officially scheduled as a date yet, but it will happen in August. It is typically our first meeting of board business every year, um, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Verdell Williams. The liaison group report will be provided by Mr. Cohen. Yes, thank you. The school district township liaison group met on May 15th by Zoom at 8 a.m. There was discussion on maintenance of school district parcel near High School Park, and it's on the other side of the creek on backing the properties in front of Church Road. And the school district actually has owned that property since back when the broader property was actually a school district building and the school district was not aware of the other property. So the township school district are working on that small parcel to figure out how to get it maintained and addressing other related issues. There isn't an update on township facilities planning, which is ongoing. Next to discussion about school district branding, Dr. Scriven addressed that tonight in part. There was then a brief discussion about the school district block party, and that was held back on May 20, 20th after the liaison group meeting. The township then spoke about Parkmobile. Parkmobile is a new street parking payment system that's being rolled out or plans to roll it out um, in June and July of this year, and it'll be phased in. The township then mentioned that the calendar for the township is coming out in July. There was discussion about a smoke bomb at the high school, and it was noted that there was um, various appropriate follow-up by the school district. Under old business, it was noted that the intersection at Windsor, Mill, Montgomery, and Surrey, that PennDOT is recommending to remove the traffic light and place stop signs at that intersection. And for people's familiarity that aren't familiar with it right away, that's at the very point of Myers. It's a very complex intersection. Um, the school district is going to look at that intersection with the police about signage and appropriate street marking. Being that's a very complex property and is um, part of the area with Myers Elementary. Um, Commissioner Nars, who's president of the Board of Commissioners, noted that water ice with a cop was happening that night on May 15th at Rita's in New York Town Plaza. I attended that event. It was well received by the community. The next liaison group meeting is scheduled for June 26th at 8 a.m. by Zoom, and that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Mr. Epps will provide the policy report. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the policy committee meeting was held on May 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. in person and streamed online. After the roll call and approval of the April 25th, 2023 minutes, we discussed the policy listed on the consent agenda uh, under the policy committee report. And so tonight there is one policy uh, under consideration for adoption. Uh, Policy number 130, homework, uh, that outlines the district's purpose, guidelines, uh, values around uh, the use of homework throughout the district. Uh, other topics discussed. Oh, before I get there, I, I want to again say thank you um, to those that have participated over the last few years, even predating my service on the board around this policy. Um, as it is crucial to our role uh, as a board. Certainly appreciate the community engagement, the committees around instruction and programs engagement around this topic. Other topics discussed during the new business portion of the meeting are three first read policies for tonight. 
uh, policy NAR 210, policy 210 for use of medications, uh, policy 122, extracurricular and co-curricular activities, and policy 123 uh, on student athletics. There are uh, administrative reviews uh, along uh, with those policies, but those are not under consideration for our vote. Uh, as another note of follow-up, um, the administrative review for uh, policy 113, behavior support, uh, has been posted online. Uh, again, thank you to the community and members of SEEK who have continued to engage uh, uh, our board and our super administration throughout our review process. Uh, that AR is up for review, which outlines the requirements uh, for the use of seclusion uh, in our district. And so as a as a um, as a broader note, right, our policy and, and, and AR, the direction we're moving is to limit the use as we have made commitments to um, create a more uh, environment of care uh, throughout our schools. Uh, May was our final meeting for the policy committee of this term. Uh, I will take another note. Principal Taylor's still in the room. We heard from him earlier this year to say thanks and thanks again. So I'm taking that lesson again to say, uh, to recognize that over the last decade, uh, the administration, this policy committee uh, has shown great diligence in reviewing and updating district policies. I get to take some of the credit for it, but this goes far beyond uh, more, much more years than I've been serving on the board. Uh, but that represents topics such as equity and achievement, uh, school discipline, the, use, the condition and use of our facilities, and much other uh, topics that really determine uh, how our staff and students are treated uh, every day that they're within our care. And so 70%, a really cool figure that was shared for uh, with us is 70% of our policies have a review date between 2020 and 2023. And so again, thank you for the diligence. Uh, and we certainly uh, will move forward in the next term with a few changes. Uh, we will meet because of the, the work that's been done. Uh, we can, with Vincide, we'll convene uh, once every other month uh, and we will be just as keen around some topics that will come up. We know there's uh, the the, con our, the conditions of our facilities. Uh, we've heard from community members, some medical requirements for volunteers, use of technology, sustainability. There's certainly a number of uh, items for us to continue uh, our, our review and updating of policies. And so community members, uh, please continue to share topics that are important to you. Uh, as students, as as members of staff, right, and as community member parents and community members uh, that on topics that relate to our uh, district. And so again, that closes out our com committee meetings for this term. Uh, we will pick it up back after August uh, when we come back. Thank you, Mr. Epson. You're up again for a legislative report. That's right. So uh, as uh, co-chair of the policy committee, I just was able to give the policy committee report uh, now as a representative of the Montgomery County School Board Legislative Committee. I'll provide a few updates uh, on legislation, either proposed or enacted, that is relevant to uh, Sheltonham and our Commonwealth. As a committee, we have not met uh, yet since our last legislative board meeting, but we will meet next week, June 21st, uh, for some important updates. Uh, this report uh, this month really focused on the Commonwealth. Uh, in March, Governor Shapiro presented his budget proposal to the legislator, uh, which called for an increase to basic education funding uh, and special education funding uh, by about $680 million, roughly. That means about $1.2 million for Sheltonham uh, combined basic and special education funding. Last week, the House of Representatives passed their proposal, their budget proposal, with a vote of 102 to 101. Uh, if you've been following along, it's a very, um, very close margins right now in the House. And so along pretty much party lines, the House passed their version of the budget, which actually calls for, uh, if you remember that number from the, the governor's proposal, the House proposal calls for a $1.7 billion 
increase in funding to education. And so there's some different proposals uh, on the board right now uh, for negotiation. The goal is to pass a budget before the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th. Uh, Pennsylvania has a pretty closed budget process. And so negotiations are held in private uh, among the governor and, and um, leaders from both the Senate and the House of Representatives. And so while those negotiations take place uh, in private, that doesn't limit community members uh, and us as a board and, and, and entity from reaching out uh, to legislators with your views on uh, the various proposals. Uh, with that, uh, so coming soon, right, we have to decide on our budget. We'll be deciding on our budget much before uh, the state decides on its budget. Uh, and we've been, we've even heard in a recent finance committee some of the implications that has on when, even when we receive uh, uh, our funding for schools. So that is a topic to follow uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, June 30th is right around the corner, uh, and hopefully we'll have, uh, they'll have an agreement in place and shared with, uh, with us throughout, throughout the state. There are a few bills under consideration that impact our community and the state of education that I'd like to point out. Uh, and please note that none of these are law. Uh, it will require a vote of the opposite house and also a signature from the governor. Uh, but certainly want to make mention of a few that, um, if you feel a certain way, those that are listening, uh, certainly your advocacy uh, can be heard and felt uh, at the state level. Uh, Representative Malcolm Kenyatta has introduced the Fairness Act, which would make Pennsylvania just the 23rd state uh, to officially protect people who identify uh, as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, uh, questioning, or, or uh, another identity. Uh, will protect those individuals from being denied housing, education, or access to public accommodations simply because of who they are or who they love. Uh, again, it would be just the 23rd state to do that, but certainly something that we can uh, advocate as being passed in the House and further Senate to become law uh, in our Commonwealth. Uh, our own state Senator Art Haywood and others have introduced bills that would increase the minimum wage uh, here in Pennsylvania to $15 an hour. Uh, right now, our minimum wage is quite outdated. It's quite abysmal uh, at $7.25. That's something that impacts people of all uh, ages, even possibly even our uh, some of our students here in, uh, in Shelham. Something also to follow. Uh, last but not least, the Senate has passed a bill that would require students to complete a personal financial literacy course as a requirement for graduation uh, beginning in 2026-2027 school year. Uh, graduation requirements, unfunded mandates, that's been a topic of conversation that we've, I've reported on and is also a legislative priority uh, for our school board uh, uh, administrators. Uh, that is something to track uh, as it, we know there's financial education that happens already uh, throughout our district, uh, but in terms of uh, a mandate and re graduation requirements, that's a bit of a different conversation. So something we want to track uh, as it develops throughout uh, the legislative process. So as I mentioned, these bills are under consideration uh, and any and everyone uh, within listening ear or, or listening to the recording is welcome and encouraged to reach out to our legislators at the state level. Again, we have a member of the Appropriations Committee, Senator R. Haywood, as well as in the House, a member of the House Education Committee. So folks who uh, make uh, an extra layer of decisions and oversight on these issues uh, for our state. Uh, that concludes my legislative report for tonight, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Epps. Mr. Cohen. Yes, thank you, Mr. Epps. I, I just want to state that um, I have a sense of frustration with some members of the legislature that publicly stated that the deadline that's required by the state for the end of June for the budget, that they don't take seriously, frankly, and that they're advocating my mind their responsibility. It's going to impact school districts throughout the Commonwealth. They've had the draft budget for months. I realize it is a negotiation process, as you mentioned, but I do have a sense of frustration that certain members of our legislature are not taking the process seriously, and why am I not doing their duty? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Any other comments? All right, next we'll move on to the approval of our agenda items. Um, the first item for vote is the adoption of the 2023-2024 final budget. 
May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Ms. Lomas, second. We will take this by voice vote. I will call uh, our board members. Uh, Ms. Mulhern? Yes. Aye. Ms. Ms. Haywood? Aye. Mr. Epps? Aye. Mr. Wood, Bird L. Williams? Aye. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Mr. Fishbein? Aye. Ms. Lohman? Aye. Before I say aye, well, I already said it. I should have I should have asked for comments. Do we have any comments before we finalize? Mr. Cohen? I would just like to thank the administration for their diligence um, on looking at the budget and making um, tough decisions and, and limiting the impact of the tax increase. I know that we have a high tax burden in the township of the school district. And as one board member, I don't pretend to speak on behalf of the entire board, but uh, I do believe that we are aware of that certainly, and that does weigh in our minds. And I wanna thank the administration for looking at um, the various cost issues and opportunities and obstacles and challenges we face and coming in with a very limited tax increase. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Um, I would like to note for the record that Mr. Uh, Schultz is not here tonight to vote on this. Um, he and his wife just had a new baby. So that is the reason that they're not here. So they're home taking care of their new uh, their new baby. Um, I am Pam Henry, uh, I, I for this vote. And so the motion carries. Next, we have the approval of agenda items. Um, can I have a motion to approve with the exception of the approval of the 2022-2023 school district insurance, which will be brought back in uh, August. So moved. Second, Zachary Epps. Any board comments before we take a vote? Mr. Cohen? Um, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the entire um, consent agenda. I do wanna point out that the homework policy for adoption, which I'm in favor of, I would like there to be future consideration um, about looking at AI, artificial intelligence in a more direct way. I believe that the proposed policy does adopt it, but I wanna see from my perspective, more deliberation, more thought about addressing the complex issue of artificial intelligence um, in the policy, both by stating um, it more directly in terms of how the district is treating it and also looking at the challenges and opportunities that it presents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Ms. Haywood? Yes, can I just comment on Mr. Cohen? At the last policy committee meeting, in fact, that was one of the topics that came up for future consideration for a policy committee meeting. Um, Dr. Smith and um, Ms. Jackson, I think Dr. Smith had shared that there's been a lot of talk in the industry about AI and really balancing what we will do um, in terms of a, from a policy perspective. So stay tuned and come to our next meeting, well, all of our meetings, but especially any meeting where we're talking about AI, but that is definitely something that's been brought up as well as sustainability. That's another policy that we've talked about. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Burdell Williams. Yep, I'll be very brief. I uh, just want to acknowledge the number of volunteers uh, that continue to uh, complete the requirements and also again make the strong effort to support our schools. Uh, this was something that was sorely missed uh, throughout the pandemic, um, but is absolutely a part of the fabric of the Cheltenham School District. And just as much as our educators and staff uh, you know, continue to support our students, it's also uh, admirable that individuals take time out of their day and make space um, to be able to connect with the children of the district as well. It's really uh, an enriching aspect of what we do here, and I'm always grateful for the volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mulher? Yes, thank you, Ms. Henry. Uh, Mr. Epps mentioned this in his policy report, but I wanted to reiterate uh, my thanks for Dr. Smith and Ms. Collins for all the work on the homework policy. I don't know that any policy has had as many years and time that has gone into it. I mean, literally, I think four-ish years at this point. Um, books were read, special speakers were brought in, the community, including staff uh, and faculty were surveyed and communicated with. It really was a huge undertaking, and I am very pleased with where uh, that process has taken 
take and that's what I wanted to thank uh, and acknowledge them again for all of their hard work. Thank you. Ms. Um, Lomi. Uh, thank you, Ms. Henry. First, I, I wanted to comment on one of the resignations. Um, someone who has been very um, important to my family. I'm very sorry to see her move on from the district. Um, Mrs. Mary Aiken, um, she taught my son at Elkins Park for two years and had really had a profound impact on him. Um, and I know that she's had a profound impact on many, many, many children at Elkins Park um, in many different ways. And so I just wanted to thank her, wish her well in whatever in her new venture and um, hope she stays in touch. And um, and our district is definitely losing a tremendous educator. It will be very hard to replace. Um, and then I just also wanted to ask a question um, about one of the um, things that we're being asked to approve, just so we can highlight it, because we're being asked to approve the um, adoption of the inquiry journeys as the primary social studies resources for grades K through five. And I was just hoping that maybe um, the administration could just provide us with an explanation of why that one was chosen over the other options. Thank you for the question. Um, just really quickly, this particular series, as well as two other series, were vetted through our um, CIPD Committee's Curriculum Instruction Professional Development Committee. We also, and some of the items are still actually out on display, we also had a community evening um, to allow community members to um, come to the building to also review the resources. We did receive um, feedback, informal feedback from members of community um, they sent us emails, made phone calls, and, and gave us insight as to which series they liked and didn't like, um, and gave us uh, additional details. We also sent out a survey to all of our instructional staff. And unlike um, in the past, what we did differently this time, we did not ask staff which one of the resources they wanted. We actually asked them what they want in a resource and align what they said they wanted to the resources um, to make sure that that was um, the primary goal was to make sure that um, the teachers and staff were able to use resources that would align to um, their, their usage. And so we landed with um, this particular um, resource because it, it is, is, it is non-traditional in the sense that it doesn't come with um, a gang of textbooks or workbooks or consumables um, there are a lot of online resources that are printable for those who still like to touch the paper and still like that um, that mode of, uh, of interaction with text. The key um, to this particular um, resource is we felt it was um, updated. We felt it spoke to the current events that are happening in our country, the recent events. Um, we felt that this particular resource more so captured our um, spirit of making sure that our students aren't just um, regurgitators of information. It kind of goes back to Ms. Hayward's comment about AI. This, this series takes out the guesswork of students just going on a computer and typing in a question and getting the answer. This really requires students to think, think deeply, think broadly. This also um, is an opportunity for our teachers who use this resource to also connect it to um, English language arts, to math, to science and other areas. So we felt that based on what our surveys told us that our instructional staff wanted, this is the resource that more so um, aligns with it. You will also see for a new resource K through five, um, the price tag is also, that wasn't the generating factor, but that is a good um, byproduct of the selection is that it's not as expensive as it is, um, as it would have been had we um, ordered the traditional um, textbook, so on and so forth. And uh, one of the things that was brought up at our CIPD committee, which is important, is that we need a K through six resource. This resource is only K through five. So we have asked our um, sixth grade teachers to hold on for a moment. They are developing the sixth grade curriculum for the following year. In the meantime, we do have other resources, including Nuzella and some of our other resources that we have here in the district and some crossover with English language arts that our sixth grade teachers can use in the meantime. We are also encouraging our sixth grade teachers, similar to what's happening at Cedarbrook and similar to what's happening at the Sheltonham High School, is to start using primary resources 
um, with our sixth graders and to kind of get away from some of the textbooks and really have them look at primary authentic text and authentic resources and to learn that way, which is a great preparation when they go to the middle school level. And also by the time they get to um, high school, they are um, squarely uh, comfortable in this particular mode. So that, that was how we landed with this particular resource. Thank you very much for that explanation, Dr. Smith. That's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Just one comment is, um, as noted in the agenda, that while our, um, our uh, lunch uh, prices are remaining the same for the upcoming year, we are able to provide free breakfast to um, our students. Um, my my hope is that that will you know go some ways as to addressing food insecurities for some of our families that may um, experience that in the district. So I just wanted to make a note of that. All right, we will move to, unless there are other comments, we will move to um, the vote on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The motion carries. <clears throat> okay. We are moving to public comments on non-agenda items. Mr. Kaufman, do we have anyone in our Zoom room? Okay. Uh, if there's anyone in the in the audience that would like to make a comment, you can come to the podium, not your name and where you reside in the district. <clears throat> All right, we will move on to, we had no um, public, uh, previous public comments. I want to make a note before I make a motion to adjourn about our uh, future meeting. So tomorrow we will have our hybrid educational affairs meeting. Uh, on Thursday is the last teacher's day. Monday is a virtual liaison meeting. Our meetings that are listed. Oh, sorry. 26th of January. Oh, 26th of January? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so the liaison meeting. I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. It is on there. It's on June 26th. Um, the meetings listed for August. Although they are listed here for August 1st and the 8th, we know that uh, those meetings may change. So we will work with administration to get those updated meetings uh, for the uh, August timeframe. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Zachary Epps. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned.